Hi everyone, it's March 25, 2018. I will link below to all articles, all videos, all sites that I will be working off of. But as I was watching the Fullerton Informers video here at the time is now to get out of Agenda 21 Hunger Games Mega City Killed Grid Prison Cell. And he really does a very good job in explaining how we will all be living very shortly. And in fact, the stack and packs, people are living in, in them already. But this is one of the stack and packs that he points out. And it's really where we are being so transformed so quickly. It's head spinning. Look at this building. It's about a quarter of a mile long. Stack and packs. This is, this is what the rulers want you living in. And he points out the windows will be blocking uh, ultraviolet light. And no doubt they'll have lead lighting in these apartments. They, they will be essentially considered habitable, but they will be so uninhabitable because they will be so dangerous. Wi-Fi will be lighting up every apartment. And, well, we still have so many people who just believe that this technology is great and it is so incredibly dangerous. But as I was watching this, I thought to myself, what about 5G? What about 5G? 5G is going to kill so many of us off. So many of us are already struggling on a daily basis just to try to survive life in our microwave, wi fi Wi-Fried environment. And 5G, hmm. Then I was thinking about all of these products that are being sold to people to protect them from from the 4G, 3G, from these microwave frequencies. Will they protect people from 5G, the millimeter wave? I don't know the answer to that. But what I do know the answer to is that since 5G is up and running already in cities across America, Atlanta, Dallas, Houston, they are, if they have not completed the rollout in cities in California, Sacramento, they will soon. 5G is being rolled out in Greenville, South Carolina. And I have no doubt that it's already in operation in New York City. the 5G Internet of Things, connecting everyone and everything to everyone and everything. They will eventually get rid of wired, the Ethernet cable that wires our Internet access. They will get rid of everything wired. We will be saturated in a wireless world with no option. Okay, that is coming. So what do you need to do right now? You desperately need to reduce your exposure. You desperately need to protect your health now because these microwave frequencies, the cumulative effect of these frequencies can render you near dead. Is that an exaggeration? Well, let me hear from you who are hypersensitive to these frequencies. You answer the question, please, for me in your comments below. So I also came across this video on Mia's new pair of glasses. And I have to say, I am impressed with Mia. And if you have not subscribed, I recommend subscribing. The lead paint conspiracy, what no one talked about. I had videos on Kafka Winston World 
Kafka Winston World is no longer available to anybody. And I can't find all of the videos, certainly not from my original Kafka Winston World channel. So I am going to be recommending videos with people who have done the research, posted the information for you so that you have an understanding of the countless lies that we've been told. But also, well, here as an example, they get rid of all that is good for us, like vitamins and, and supplements and, and natural um, healing herbs and well, they want to get rid of Kratom now, and they make illegal marijuana, which has so many medicinal uses. But did they get rid of lead paint because it was dangerous for children? Well, it is dangerous for children. But how many children and how many parents do you know that allow their children to eat paint chips that fall and, you know, there's an awful lot of homes out there that don't have paint chips all over. But you still had to get rid of that lead paint. Okay, the reason for this, and Mia tells you the reason for this, is because lead paint shields, shields the home from microwave frequencies. They use Wi-Fi also as a surveillance tool. You do know that if you have Wi-Fi in your home, you can be spied on. They can see through the walls with this technology that we have. And Wi-Fi can track your every movement in your home. And I did post videos on that too, but they're gone. You know, I also want to say that these, these people like Mia, who do a tremendous amount of research, and then they put together the information for you, they do it for free, and it would be really nice to drop donations to people. And, you know, I have, I have thought about how many people over the six years I have been on YouTube who have posted videos, left comments, uh, oh, you're all about money, and not just, you know, I'm not talking about my channel, I'm talking about all of the channels, where I would run across these comments or run across videos where people were really ripping apart anybody who was asking for donations or who had a... Um, who had monetized their channels, claiming that the minute money gets involved, you're no longer about the truth. Wow. The extraordinary amount of money that these evil, God, I don't even know what to call them. Well, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, and all of these people, the Clintons, and do you think that they could have taken control over our lives, made us slaves, and reshaped the world without money? And do you really think that we're going to get anywhere without any money, really, to fight these wealthy people who use their money to put them in positions of power. But it's not going to take any money for us. But as I was listening to Mia, I just thought to myself, you know, <laughs> I've spent six years doing a tremendous amount of research. I have spent pretty much my every waking moment trying to inform people, educate people, wake people up, um, get the information out. That has been my main, main, main priority. And when I think about how much 
research I've done. While I certainly know that it takes an awful lot of time and an awful lot of energy and researching the subjects about microwave frequencies, geoengineering, and vaccines and all and then well I do go to a lot of well I did go I don't anymore because I am one of those people who have been so brought down and I have very little energy and I don't have what it takes to do all of that research anymore but when you are researching these subjects it requires learning new languages literally so you're reading these uh, scientific papers do you think that it's easy to comprehend scientific language if you've not been in that field no so you have to you've got to do an awful lot of preparation to even understand what it is that you're trying to understand so that you can post it because something compels you to do that no it takes extraordinary energy time effort and then you're always thinking about what's the easiest in a way so you got to kind of you know figure out how you're going to be posting the information yada 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 so that finally you get a video up so, you know, and this is not coming from Mia at all. I'm just saying that when you see people who are doing this, I hope that it dawns on you to throw them a couple of bucks. Now, when I think about how much money I've spent on the New York Times, it makes me sick to my stomach. Buying that paper every single day, virtually every single day, for decades. The Sunday paper, the paper becoming more and more expensive. When I think about how much money I donated to Democracy Now!, Amy Goodman, who was, who is the quintessential disinformation agent, believing, believing that Democracy Now!, was funded only by her viewers. Yeah. Well, it's it's a real like punch in the stomach when you get you have been so fooled. You're a schmuck. When I think about the money I donated to pe um, uh, NPR, believing too that it was funded by viewers or listeners. Well, unfortunately, a lot of people, what happens is they've been so screwed by donating to certain organizations, certain news outlets, certain individuals, that suddenly they just stop because they don't want to be taken again. And I understand that. But, when I come across channels, and I also have the benefit of having spoken to some, I think I'm pretty good at discerning who is sincere and who is not. And as far as I'm concerned, those that I do recommend, I recommend them based on my sense of their sincerity. But I do know, early on on YouTube, in the first couple of years, wow, you know, there were so many people who were getting an awful lot of donations, and it came out later. You found out later that they were scamming people. And it hurt all of us. Because once you see that, then you have less trust. And then if you see it again, you even have less trust. And then trust breaks down. But for all of the people who don't do research, 
and count on people posting this kind of information. I, I kind of think it is a duty of yours to throw them a couple of bucks. I think it's an obligation. You know, I got comments underneath my lithium video. And I've, I have a vague sense that I've spoken this before in a video, and I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but somebody, or no, there were like three commenters who came at me telling me that it was irresponsible of me to post a video on lithium being sprayed because I mentioned at the tail end that you've got to detox, detox, keep your immune system up, which is something that I've mentioned at the tail end of videos often. And they came at me because I did not tell people how to detox. Now, I've posted how to detox videos, and many of them are also on Kafka Winston World. So, um, and one in particular I was looking for, um, and I could not find it to repost it. But the video, the subject of the video was the spraying of lithium, not detox. So when you come across people who are talking about a particular subject and then they mention things just kind of secondarily, it's not the primary focus of the video, don't be telling them that they should be spoon feeding you every bit of information that is so Wow, it's just a wow to me. First of all, we're all adults. When I come across somebody who is posting information about a particular subject that I don't know anything about, well, what I would do is I would do more research to learn more about that subject if it was necessary. But if they just mention things that were indirectly related to that subject? I can't, I, it would not even dawn on me to leave a comment saying, I can't believe that you didn't tell us anything about what you had mentioned. I would simply do the research. That's what adults do. But then a lot of people also, just innocent people, just saying, oh, God, how do you detox? All right, so I'm going to be posting a video on that. Um, but where would we all be if no one posted any information? Where would we all be if no one did research, did all of the work to get all of the facts, and then do the work to kind of synthesize all of those facts and put it together and post a video. Well, that would require everyone to do the research, right? So. And there's an awful lot of people on YouTube that have had experiences that have brought them really low And there are some that have used the truth as a, it's like a cottage industry. It has become their livelihood. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Because they are putting out really good information. I wish some of them would try to inspire their subscribers to take action but information, very, it's, that's the first step. Awareness, knowledge, all right. But there are an awful lot of people who do have that, whatever it is, that compels them. It feels like a responsibility. And if you ignore it, it's, it's almost impossible to ignore. You've got to do this work. 
But in doing it, there are so many people who benefit from it. Kind of like under this video right here, you have one or maybe two people. Um, I think she has partnered up with somebody, but definitely one, Mia, who's done the work, and 16,036 people benefited from it. So, you know, and I don't even know if there's any way that you can donate to Mia in particularly. I'm not saying that, but hell, you could just leave a comment and ask and ask because it really helps people when they're not living stressed all the time about their finances. All right, so lead paint. <laughs> yes, remove that lead paint so we can spy on you and we can touch you with those frequencies. That was the purpose. So, a few tips on shielding yourself. Shielding RF radiation with aluminum screening. Watch this. Using ordinary aluminum mesh screening. Available at hardware stores. Screening blocks a great deal of the radiation from this high emitting older model cell phone. Okay, so this video also goes through um, smart meters and uh, cell towers. Um, aluminum screening. When I was in Kentucky, I got aluminum screening, and it was a tight mesh of aluminum screening, and we wrapped the router, the Wi Fi router in the aluminum screening and it definitely reduced the amount of radiation pulsating out of that router. So if you still have a Wi-Fi router, first thing you need to do, the best thing that you need to do is get rid of it. Get rid of it. Because at least that way you will be wired and you will be reducing your exposure to these dangerous frequencies and the cumulative effect will be less so you'll be in a better position when they finally take Wi-Fi or, or, or wired access away from all of us. You will be healthier than those who have not. And if you insist on your Wi-Fi then I suggest that you get this aluminum screening and wrap your router in it. The other thing that we couldn't do in Marlene's home in Kentucky was the smart meter. You can get like a, a cut out maybe a two foot um, diameter square out of the aluminum and place it on the wall, the internal wall where the smart meter is right behind it. And you will reduce the amount of pulsating dangerous frequencies coming into your home. And you can put like two or three or four levels of that aluminum screening. And you'll reduce even more. Um, the earthing. Now, the other thing that I have to say about the earthing is I still see comments from people saying walk barefoot on grass, on you know the ground. And yes, I used to do that all the time. Unfortunately, I didn't realize that I was doing it very close to a Gwen Tower. And when I would come home and my feet were burned and my legs right up to 
above my knee were very, very swollen, and it happened numerous times, I did research because I could not figure out what the hell was going on. I had already done research on cell towers and microwave frequencies, and I knew that they could burn people with these microwave frequencies. And that's what I thought it was. But then I came across a paper, Gwen Towers. It was a military-funded um, research paper on the dangers of Gwen Towers. Now, the difference between a Gwen Tower and a cell tower. A Gwen Tower, you will see these wires going down to the ground. And the wires are in a circle. Wires coming out of every um, point of the Gwen Tower. Now this is a kind of uh, Gwen Tower that is not the most common that I have seen. You'll just see a pole and at the top they may have now instruments where they didn't before but now Gwen Towers they're putting instruments on them and these are antennas no doubt used for weather modification um, at the top of the Gwen Tower but these wires go right down to the ground because Gwen the ground wave emergency network is ground-based frequencies and in that paper that I had come across it said the most dangerous position you can put yourself in is barefoot around a Gwen Tower because we are antennas we will pull frequencies into us and if you're barefoot because we are antennas, the frequencies come right through your feet, going right on through your body. If you see a Gwen Tower near a parking lot or a shopping mall or whatever, the minute you touch your car, you're drawing those frequencies more intensely, more quickly into your body. Because the car is a conductor, metal is a conductor. So it's very, very important to now, unfortunately, yeah, it's like walking on a landmine now everywhere we go in this country. You've got to make sure that there is not a Gwen Tower around you as you're walking barefoot. So the reason why I am uh, going to this site now is because a friend of mine here in South Carolina who has really suffered for years, she's got Lyme disease, she's got a lot of problems, um, and she has done a tremendous amount of research and tried everything. I have not, I haven't posted videos on the products that people use. And I'm sorry for all of you who have left comments saying, try this, try that. I don't know you. And yes, trust is gone. So. But when I have someone in my life who I know and they say, oh my God, I got relief, that's information that I will pass along. So they have earthing mats where you can, um, you can use that. You can put your keyboard on that earthing mat and people have been experiencing relief. Understand this, I'm not pushing anything. I am just posting information that, well, now we're living in a world where so many people are struggling to feel better and finding that they're coming up empty. So this is the earthing mat um, and they have throws, earthing throws, and this silver sleep pad I believe is what my friend was using and she slept better and she also has carpal tunnels 
and her hands, God, I can't remember, um, but she experienced almost like a paralysis in her hands. Oh, I can't remember now, but something about her hands. All right. Well, she wasn't experiencing it anymore when sleeping on this pad. So when I heard that from her, I thought, okay, definitely worth trying. Unfortunately, a lot of these products are expensive. I understand that. You know, much of life has become, it's almost like, well, if you have money, life is for you. If you don't, this world isn't for you. Um, but the earthing patch kits. Now, this needs to be grounded. What does that mean? That is something that you're going to have to do some research on. And the grounding uh, of these products there's some information in here in this article and I like the articles that give you an awful lot of information on just one page. Um, grounding. So while just placing a Mylar energy blanket which is an expensive, inexpensive um, possibility to shield yourself from these frequencies um, as well as aluminum mesh, even tin, tin foil, uh, the grounding of it is really important. Now, you're talking to somebody that has been on such overwhelm and overload that when you start talking about things that is, for me, new information, it's very hard for me to take it in. If it was not hard for me to take it in, then I would be um, <clears throat> talking about what you have to do. So what you have to do is come over here and read about it. While just placing a Mylar energy blanket between you and a source of microwave energy will have some attenuating effect. You will get a better shielding effect if you connect the aluminum, aluminizes side of the Mylar energy blanket to a solid ground connection. If your apartment is properly wired in compliance with the natural national electric code, all of your wall outlets will have only grounded electrical outlets. Assuming you have grounded electrical electric outlets, you still need to check that the outlet is both wired with correct polarity going to each side of the electric plug and determine if the outlet is properly grounded. To do that, you can buy a circuit tester. This is what this person uses and you can find out. You can buy them at Home Depot. Uh, they're not expensive, five to eight dollars. But what is really important is for you to get how dangerous this is. Our environment has become incredibly dangerous. And if you do want to preserve your health, get rid of all wireless devices in your home. Stop using wireless routers, wireless printers, wireless keyboards, wireless mouse. Then get rid of cordless phones if you use them. If you must use a cell phone, use it on speakerphone mode or use the earbuds to listen and talk. But don't put the cell phone directly against your ear, as most people foolishly do, foolishly, suicidally do at this point because the information has been out there for years. Unbelievably dangerous. Brain tumors are exponentially increasing. Suicidal. Um, if you have a wireless device in your home and you don't notice any symptoms of RF pollution yet, just wait a few years. You will. And the older you are, the faster it will happen. The tolerance to radio frequency energy fields goes down over time. Your body can absorb and handle so much, but after you pass a certain tolerance point, 
The body goes into overload and you will get the typical symptoms of dizziness, lightheadedness, head congestions, brain fog, uh, nervousness, palpitations, inability to fall asleep, etc. The symptoms, well, are really, there's just a myriad, myriad symptoms that one experiences. And an awful lot of people do not understand that the symptoms that they are experiencing are related to the Wi-Fi, related to their cell phones, related to the cell tower outside their homes, related to the Gwen Towers that are all over the place, related to our incredibly toxic environment, saturated in dangerous frequencies, and they go off to doctors, they get handed prescriptions, they take the prescriptions, and then they might feel some relief temporarily. But the drugs, the pharmaceutical companies make and FDA approve, you end up with more problems, medical problems. Um, I don't know how you know, I have, I've, I have subscribers for that have been with me for years and years and years. And I am kind of amazed with all of the videos that I have posted on how dangerous these frequencies are. That there are still some that won't give up Wi-Fi, and those that did, it took, it took them years, years. So when I see at the bottom of this article, why do millions of people continue to use smartphones and Wi-Fi devices when the health da damaging effects are so well known? That in 2015, it's 2018 now. The health risks of Wi-Fi devices such as smartphones are being willfully ignored by millions. Are you among the damned? No matter how much information that comes out about how dangerous these frequencies are, what is it about these frequencies or, or these gadgets that people can't seem to let go of? And I'm sorry to say that I think for an awful lot of people, convenience has trumped good health. Good health. So when so many in the quote unquote awake crowd are still, are still not doing anything to reduce their exposure to what is taking place, guess what? we will have less and less people who are capable of fighting anything. So, for those who have asked wh what kind of meter is good to check the um, radio frequencies coming into your home, here it is. And my hunch is that this one is expensive, but it's important because it, it's not just that, okay, I know where my smart meter is, and so I'm going to put up aluminum mesh right behind on, in the, uh, on the internal wall, but there are so many for sources now of these dangerous radio frequencies coming from inside your home as well as outside your home. Cell phone towers. And this video that I show you is, or that I went through just a little while ago, she or he shows you that even just aluminum on windows can block a lot of the uh, emissions from cell phone towers and antennas, you know. And you have antennas all over the place, on stores, on people's homes. 
And if you could, hell, put aluminum screening, screening on every wall. Because unfortunately, these frequencies do penetrate your homes. It was why they wanted you to get rid of that lead paint. All right. Um, and this. Now, other people have sent me this site. Again, I do not know. I've heard from people that they get relief from products. I've heard from other people that they've wasted their money. But we are all unique. And what works for one may not work for the other. So try. Just keep trying. You know, and if you don't try, you can't, you can't know. So this is the other site from a longtime subscriber of mine. And this is the site from somebody in my real life who has bought some of these products, especially the sleep pad, and she has found relief. So all articles, sites, and videos, you will find the links below. I hope everybody is well. And my heart goes out to all of you who are really struggling now.